What's going on everybody, Gem Mint here and we're back with another Every Omnibus So Far video and we're going to start with Wolverine. It's been over 5 years since I did the original video to this so this is the 2023 update. Before we continue, do me a personal favor, hit that like button if you're enjoying these videos, make sure you're subscribed if you're not, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Wolverine costume of all time is. My personal favorite, I gotta go with that brown suit. Something about how it pairs with Sabretooth and it's kind of like his solo outfit when he's not with the team. That's my favorite, let me know yours. And let's start by jumping into the first three volumes of Wolverine. This includes his first appearances and his first ongoing series. Let's jump into it. All right, here we go, man. Let's start it off. Love this cover. This was so cool how they even changed like the price to make it $99.99. Frank Miller, Wolverine 1. They did have a variant cover for this one, but I always like to stick to the original if I can. Big spine on this and the back showing all of the comics. I love it when it looks like that, the exact image with the trade dress. So it collects Marvel Comics Presents 1 through 10. That's incredibly important. That is the Weapon X story. So although it came out after his first appearance, this is the first thing you need to know about Wolverine. It's the Barry Windsor Smith stuff. Then you get issues 72 through 84 as well, continuing that storyline. Incredible Hulk 180 through 182, his first cameo, first full appearance, first Wolverine story in comic books. Then they throw in a revisiting of Hulk versus Wolverine for Incredible Hulk 340. You get Marvel Treasury Edition 6, Best of Marvel Comics Wolverine 1 through 4, which is his first miniseries by Frank Miller, classic story. Uncanny X-Men 172 and 173. You get the six issue Kitty Pride and Wolverine miniseries. Captain America Annual 8, that's the classic Mike Zett cover with that battle between Wolverine and Cap. We have Spider-Man versus Wolverine, Marvel Age Annual 4, and then Wolverine 1 through 10, the first 10 issues from his ongoing series, uh, plus Punisher War Journal 6 and 7 with those Jim Lee covers, so dope. 100 bucks when he came out inside of the dust jacket, giving us everything we need to know about Wolverine, plus an image from Frank Miller from that mini series, talking about Chris Claremont and uh, some other creators here, Jim Lee. This is the first print, so you got that all black, mine's all beat up, got the silver font for the spine and the trade dress, volume one, essential omnibus. I don't think they do this anymore either with that kind of like marble look on the cover page. I believe this is the cover for what, issue two or so? We have some credits. Here's a table of contents. Yeah, they went all out on the older stuff, man. They give you everything, the date when it came out, the name of the issue, and then jumping into the whole Marvel Comics Presents uh, Weapon X stuff, man. I always dug the artwork here. There's an homage with this version of Wolverine 2 uh, that pays homage to Wolverine 1 from that Frank Miller miniseries, which looks great. Yeah, man, this was a great story. So we've seen this played out in movies. We've seen it in comics. We've seen, I'm sure, retellings of it and more. This image is so crazy. It jumped right into the story and it gives you all the covers back to back at the end. Here's the homage I was talking about, actually. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting that they do it that way. Jumping into the Incredible Hulk stuff, like I mentioned. Man, kind of a slow, tough read, to be honest. Here goes Wolverine. There's this whole backstory, which if you weren't reading Hulk leading up to this, it's kind of like you don't really care about it. And then boom, the classic miniseries, Frank Miller on the art, Chris Claremont on the script. Yep, issue two. Wolverine in Japan, learning how to fight, not just be a berserker brute, gets taught by the father of the woman he's after, Mariko. The Kitty Pride and Wolverine miniseries. Love the artwork here. That's amazing. And then we jump into the ongoing series. So here goes Wolverine 1. And this time they did the covers right. So Patch in Madripoor. You get the little pinups at the end of those issues, which was always dope. So Patch is his alias. That's what he goes by. That's where you get that iconic cover with uh, Mr. Fixit, Grey Hulk, which is actually this issue. So issue number eight. They get Wolverine versus Sabretooth. Awesome. All right, on to volume two. They did a couple of different covers for this one and for volume three. Got the spine going here, matching with the volume one. I like how they did that. Same kind of back with all the covers. 
collecting Wolverine issues 11 through 30, so continuing the ongoing. Got Havoc and Wolverine Meltdown 1 through 4. Very uh, cool artwork on that series. Wolverine slash Nick Fury, The Scorpio Connection, Wolverine, The Judge Adventure. You got Wolverine Bloodshot. Material for Marvel Comics Presents 38 through 71. And it looks like that's it. Retailed 125. So they're basically giving us everywhere that Wolverine showed up in chronological order. Like I said, picking up for where his 1988 series started, going to issue 30, and then giving us all those mini series and tie-ins. Awesome artwork here on the dust jacket and on the hardcover itself. Got those virgin covers. And then let's jump into it. So like a dark gray cover page. Nice kind of a pinup going on here. Some credits. Love that artwork. I think that's Eric Larson. Got the table of contents. Here's Meltdown. Like I said, I think it was like a painted style by the Simonsons. Yeah, so the Wolverine Havoc Mini. Then we jump into Wolverine and Nick Fury, the Scorpio Connection. Another kind of like little one-shot story with a unique art style. Then after that, we jump back into familiar territory with the regular ongoing series, back to that kind of classic art style for this era. Love the coloring and the paneling. More Walter Simonson, Mike Mignola. Here goes the cover of The Dust Jacket for issue 17. Love the artwork here, man. His mask being ripped away, exposing his face and his hair. Loving these wraparound covers, man. Trading cards. Oh, yeah, that's so cool how they included this. So series one, I remember this. The Liefeld Wolverine Saga cover. We got some covers and some sketch designs. Oh, that wraparound cover. Original art, that's dope. The Bloodlust cover. That's it for volume two. All right, and the last one for the original trilogy so far, we have a couple of different covers for this one, man, for volume three. I think they had the Jim Lee one too on that one. Here's the spine. Always got the brown suit Wolverine on the bottom and on the back, blood and claws collecting Wolverine 31 through 59 from the 1988 series. And you have Wolverine Bloody Choices, Wolverine Reign of Terror, Ghost Rider slash Wolverine slash Punisher, Hearts of Darkness, collecting X-Men 4 through 7, that's the Omega Red stuff from the Jim Lee era, material from Marvel Fanfare 54 and 55, and Marvel Comics Presents 85 through 108, giving us a biography on Larry Hama and Mark Silvestri, as well as where we're at with Wolverine for this Omni. They did like a comic book panel kind of thing, wraparound cover here on the actual hardcover. Let's jump into the interiors. We've got these black cover pages, Wolverine in the blue and yellow. Here we have our credits and table of contents. Boom, jumping into issue 31 from the ongoing. Loving the art style this time, man. This is like my era. Before it gets with the digitalized coloring. Wolverine issue 34, fighting a wolf on the cover. Fighting in the snow, feral Wolverine. Some Lady Deathstrike action. Issue 42 here, classic cover, cable on the front. Fighting Sabretooth. Love how we have the pinups that you know continue on this series. Beautiful covers. Jumping into the Reign of Terror graphic novel one shot, continuing that trend from volume two. Sam Keith stuff here. Love me some Sam Keith. Wolverine versus Cyber. So they throw in the graphic novels and the Marvel Comics presents in printing order, right? And then continuing with the ongoing series. So I like how they did that and paid attention to the continuity. Here's the X-Men stuff versus Omega Red. Classic, classic material. Double dips a little bit, but Jim Lee artwork. Super 90s with Jubilee and the roller blades. <laughs> Always get some Marvel Age material here. Larry Hama interview, Sam Keith interview. Wizard, so this is the shirt I'm wearing right now, actually. <laughs> the Eric Larson Wizard cover. The trading cards, love how they did the X-Men Series 1, Marvel Universe Series 2. To me, those are essential, must-have omnibus for every collection. Moving on to the next one, I haven't read this run. It does still contain issues from the 1988 ongoing series. It's Weapon X, The Return. Got the cover of the dust jacket here. This one is a big boy. Got the big spine here with Sabretooth paying homage to that Wolverine 1 cover. 
and here goes the back it picks up on that original ongoing series from 1988 but issues 162 through 166 then 173 and 174 and 176 collects deadpool 57 through 60 then weapon x one half and then the whole run one through 28 weapon x the draft weapon x days of future now one through five some more material from wolverine 175 deadpool 27 this one came out with a 125 dollars cover price all right so frank thierry and sean chen we get some background on what's going on on the story here to the left the inside of the dust jacket has the same artwork but no trade dress and nothing on the back same spine opening that up got some gray cover pages here it's pretty unique all right weapon x the return here we have the credits and table of contents got a nice whole 340 homage for the 2000 annual yeah so this has that kind of early 2000s art style to it and coloring as you would expect here goes saber tooth got beast doesn't look too bad actually got the covers before each issue which is always a plus so some deadpool wolverine stuff oh yeah that, that must be from the deadpool series right it collects those three issues or so omega red showing up wolverine 174 eventually uh i hope we get an omnibus that bridges the gap between volume three and this volume so that we could eventually get that whole entire first ongoing series collected in omnibus all right so we got a weapon x sketchbook in the back a letters page and that's it for the bonus material all right another essential omnibus this needs to be in everyone's collection as well wolverine by mark miller containing the old man logan storyline and more let's take a look at it great cover here man wolverine by mark miller this is one of the more thinner omnis got the spine going on here john ramita jr on artwork collecting wolverine 20 through 32 and 66 through 72 from the 2003 series also collects old man logan giant size issue number one this was 75 bucks when it came out i can't remember if i reviewed this one on the channel or not i think i must have hardcover's got some black and white sketches dust jacket here and the old man logan artwork from the back got the black interior pages keeping it going with the black and white here we have some credits got an introduction by garth ennis it's high praise it's funny how you know this doesn't really look you know memorable but then you have old man logan which is iconic can't forget old man logan more ninja stuff and then uh, wolverine 66 so that's when old man logan starts with the wraparound cover here awesome story taking place in the future all the heroes fell hulk had this whole civilization of inbred hulks Hawkeye's still around, though, and he's blind, ironically enough, but he still drives. <laughs> Great story with some twists and turns. I don't want to spoil it, but um, must read for anyone, a Wolverine fan or not. Crazy bloodbath here. Plays a big part of the story. Oh, yeah, we get the Venom symbiote combined with a T-Rex. This big Ant-Man skeleton is cool. Yeah, Old Man Logan, highly recommended. We got some cover sketches and pencils. John Ramita Jr. Some more of that, some more variants. Mark Silvestri. Joe Casada dust jacket artwork. <laughs> we actually caught this one in color from Wolverine 26. A lot of sketches and designs. Pretty cool, man. Must own Omnibus. Before we get into the Jason Aaron trilogy, I want to let you guys know I'm going live on Whatnot this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, and we're auctioning off not only some comics, but the Silver Surfer maquette by Sideshow. This is the exclusive, and it is sold out. We're starting it at a dollar. Plus, we're giving away the Joker premium format at the end of this month as well, so make sure you're not only signed up for Whatnot, but you're following me and bookmark those shows. All right, so Jason Aaron's trilogy, it starts with Wolverine by Jason Aaron, Wolverine goes to hell, and then it ends with Wolverine and the X-Men. Let's take a look at them. All right, guys, volume one, Wolverine by Jason Aaron. Got that clean white cover. Here we have the spine. Moving on to the back, giving us the images of the covers, collecting from the 2003 volume, issue 56, 62 through 65, Wolverine Manifest Destiny 1 through 4, 
Weapon X 1 through 16, and Dark Reign The List Wolverine. It also does collect some material from that Wolverine series issues 73 and 74, Dark X-Men The Beginning number 3, and Wolverine from that 1988 volume number 175. Here we have biography on Wolverine on the side, on the creators to the right. Looks like Asad Ribic did some work here as well. Old school omnibus, and this was like kind of a rare one. It's navy blue with the silver Wolverine omnibus and the spine. The spine looks great though. Now I read and reviewed this and Wolverine Goes to Hell on the channel. They're still up. I um, read the Wolverine and X-Men run in floppies when they came out in the, in the comic shops. But <laughs> I remember Wolverine and the X-Men. I don't really remember this one whatsoever. So you get an introduction by Jason Aaron. I kind of remember that. I think he was telling about how he got the job with Marvel. I think they even included his first Wolverine story in the back of one of these as well. So he takes over here with Wolverine 56. That lets us know where we were in this run prior to that. I remember this whole pit scenario. So Wolverine is like Weapon X style right here. Breaks free. Jason Aaron was always very raunchy and very real with his writing, man. I always really dug Jason Aaron. Oh, I remember this one. This was like the life of Wolverine, uh, what he goes through in an entire week. It was kind of a fun little issue right here. All right, so wrapping up towards the end of this, the death locks come through. Anything with death lock, I'm in. All right, so in the back of this one, we get some more variants. Got the Adam Kubert Weapon X, Wolverine. Some cool variants here in the back. One from the dust jacket. Uncanny X-Force, and that's it. And then Wolverine goes to hell. So here we have the front of the dust jacket. Here goes the spine and the back. Collecting Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine 1 through 6. Wolverine 1 through 20, this was the 2010 volume, includes issues 5.1, and then 300 through 304, where they went back to the legacy numbering. You got X-Men Schism, 1 through 5, and material from the Road to Hell number 1. Uh, also had a $100 cover price. All right, so the inside of the dust jacket, letting us know what's going on with Spider-Man and Wolverine, and the whole X-Men Schism event, which had big ramifications moving forward. It split the run to Uncanny X-Men and Wolverine and the X-Men. Wolverine takes over the school, but before he can get there, he's got to go through hell, literally. Wraparound cover here looks great. My favorite type of covers under the dust jacket. Got the black interior page. Wolverine with the red eyes, looking berserker. Table of Contents, very cool. Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine 1. I don't really remember too much from this miniseries, to be honest. Looks like you get some uh, variants, though, right after each issue, which is cool. Oh, here you have, what, Wild Child? That looks like Jay Lee artwork. Yep. Wolverine fighting demons and Sabretooth. Right, and then here goes to the X-Men event. That's when X-Men were living on Utopia. Pre Krakoa days here. Yeah, that, that's the uh, version of Cyclops we get. This leads into the whole Avengers vs X Men stuff. Well, eventually, and this is what causes the rift. And then you have Cyclops vs Wolverine. That also leads to the whole Cyclops was right stuff when he went crazy with the black costume with the red X face. All right, moving into the bonus material. So you have these connecting covers by uh, Marco Jajevic. Amazing, man. Do these all connect or is it two separate things? Those are amazing. All right, we got some variants here. Art Adams, the classic J. Scott Campbell Deadpool variant. That one, the original one, uh, went crazy expensive too. Oh, I used to have this one too, the Spider-Man 1 homage. Some sketches, second prints and such. Another connecting cover. Cyclops vs. Wolverine, the whole schism, schism. The director's cut, fade from pencils to colors. It's a script by Jason Aaron. You've got design sketches. And it looks like they wrap it up with that. All right, and then the last one, Wolverine and the X-Men by Jason Aaron. This is where we get Quentin Choir. This is where Logan takes over the school, collecting issues one through 35 from said title, 
plus issues 38 through 42 with annual one retailing $100. Here's a little biography to get you caught up. Little uncanny 141 homage here as well. Inside of the dust jacket here with the biographies. Nice wraparound cover here. Now, this was pre Krakoa, but Krakoa, I mean, has been a thing always since Giant Size X Men, but I believe they were uh, on Krakoa or Krakoa was part of the school here. Got the yellow interiors, some nice artwork, big table of contents. Jumping into issue number one iconic cover. Got a Frank Cho variant. So the most unlikely headmaster of the school, Logan, that's kind of the thing here. It's almost like kindergarten cop, right? <laughs> the unlikely roughneck who's got to tame all these children. Quentin Quire, Omega Mutant Telepath. I think he's my favorite character from these new guys. And then we have some new guys that we've seen from the earlier issues as well, man. Like, um, what's the guy that you can see through him? He's a big blob with his guts on the inside. Got some Lockheed, Kitty Pride stuff. The school is like literally always trying to attack and kill somebody. Is the school Krakoa? I don't remember. But it's kind of funny, like it's not safe just walking down the halls here. <laughs> the school itself has all these types of danger room traps and all that Colossus stuff. So is this during Avengers vs. X-Men? Yeah, because he's got the Phoenix Force. Okay, so this is going on during that time then. You have the little brood child. Uh, what is it? Goop? Dupe. Yeah, dupe. Almost forgot his name. Interesting take on the characters. It's kind of like what Strange Academy is like now. It's kind of what it reminds me of flipping back through this one. Bobby Drake, Iceman, he also becomes an Omega level mutant as well. He can control these ice structures. Is this the guy I'm talking about? Glob, that's what it was. Nice colors and nice artwork in this book. All right, so an afterword from Jason Aaron, kind of like yearbook style, connecting covers. Got some character sketches, some designs and cover sketches. Hold on, wait a minute. I think these are fake letters. Yeah, these are letters to the school. So addressing Logan and Quentin. All right, that's that. All right, kind of throwing this in there as an honorable mention, all new Wolverine. It's Laura Kenny. It's the once clone, but later confirmed to be daughter of Wolverine. She went by the moniker Wolverine and even wore the same uniform as you can see on the cover. So I figured we'd throw it in there. Let's take a look at it. All right, guys, all new Wolverine by Tom Taylor. Always dug this cover, fire cover X23. We've got all new Wolverine on the spine here. The creators, little Laura Kinney on the bottom. And then we have the back here. So collecting all new Wolverine one through 35 plus annual one. Also contains generations, Wolverine and all new Wolverine. $100 cover price, giving a little biography on X-23, more of the same on the inside of the dust jacket. I mean, that's what they usually do, right? Biography, giving some insight to the creators. Then here we have under the dust jacket, some beautiful artwork on both sides, some uncanny X-Force action here. And let's go into the book. So you got the yellow interior page. Nice big pinup here of Laura. Got the credits here, table of contents. So it jumps into issue one, you get a virgin cover. I remember reading the first arc of this when it came out in uh, floppies, uh, dealing with clones and such. I really wasn't a big fan of it. I have yet to go back in there and continue the run. Looks like Taskmaster shows up here. Got some Doctor Strange. So yeah, not really too familiar after that, after the whole clone and there was a bunch of Laura Kinney's or something to that effect here. X-23 wasn't a character that I really got into as much as I am a Wolverine fan. I don't know. I just kind of looked at it like another Wolverine clone and <laughs> she exactly was that for a while before they made her his actual biological daughter. Here she goes facing old man Logan. Got some Black Panther action here. So the most recent as far as uh, when it was printed Wolverine Omnibus Guardians of the Galaxy team up. Here's with Beast and X-Men. Looks like Dakin. I guess it would be her, what, her half-brother? Looks like she got some type of enhanced powers, too. I remember when Wolverine had those claws that had the glow to it. I think that was around, what, 2018 or so? So we got the design variant. Those are usually 1 out of 10 ratios. Action figure variant by John Tyler Christopher. Oh, you gotta love the flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, DMX homage. The famous Batman Robin slap homage. I like when the Omnis give us all of the variants on these modern runs because there's so many variants, hard to collect. 
Francisco Matina with the uh, Symbio cover. Here's another great example, a connecting cover, variant set. You get all the art and all the images in one book. Got some Deadpool action here. Got some sketches in the back here. Oh, here's that futuristic suit. I feel like I read that. And that's it for all new Wolverine. I want to thank that Spider-Man booth for sponsoring this video. They have a monthly subscription box, which guarantees you five comics, $100 retail value, plus two exclusives that you can only get in this box. The first one is 8 Billion Genies, issue number eight, virgin cover limited to just 500 copies. And the second one is 300, issue number one, reprinting Frank Miller's classic with a limited print run of just 1,500. Check out that SpidermanBooth.com and sign up for their subscription box today. And there we have it, y'all. Every Wolverine omnibus released thus far. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Share it with a friend. Stay minty fresh. Peace.